I'm gonna play some music in a minute and get vibe and get live and do all the things we need to do. I got some people in the building that's gonna talk some stuff. I got the serial entrepreneur Brian Anderson with me tonight. Yo. So we're gonna touch on a lot of things tonight though. We're gonna try to get some information in. Uh, we're gonna be very serious about that information. And we want y'all to really um, tap in, you know what I mean? Tap in. The time on this party, Thriller Campaign. So, you know, Blaze, honorable DJ at Thriller Campaign Sound, going to play a couple songs for y'all. Vibe with us. Vibe with us. Here at Sound of ESB. Pierre, go up. What up? Okay. We live, we live. Thriller Campaign. The time is party. Podcast. Sunday night, you know, we're running a little late, you know, on the time frame of what we're doing, but we appreciate y'all for tapping in, trying to get everybody logged in for the first time we're doing this live, you know, so we're going to get y'all some information, like we said. We're going to run it down real quick. My name is Mac Illa, the campaign's thriller. We started back in, um, shoot, we go back about 15 years, the people on record, throwing parties in the city from Coco's. Palm Grill, downtown, Lost Beat, um, Los Olas, Beach Place. Done a lot of things in the city once again. Poolside, of course, infamously. Bar runners. But right now, we're talking about some information that we want to talk about to get it right. To break down some things before we go into some information with the guests we got for tonight that's going to do the 15-minute episode every Sunday for our Autonomous Party podcast. I'm going to break down real quick for y'all what Thriller Campaign kind of means and what it stands for. Thriller, the harsh reality is live life always and at the same time autonomously. Most importantly, autonomously. Govern yourself accordingly. So with that being said, that's how we came up with the Autonomous Party to give you some information to the community and break down some things for y'all. And with that being said, we're going to go into the topic of the night with our guest that's going to give us that 15 minute interval of some good source of information, get your notes, do some research, hit us on the Thriller Campaign joint, let us know what you think. Responses, let us know what you think. It's always good to get some feedback. Indeed. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce the serial entrepreneur, the serial entrepreneur, like literally. Brian Anderson. Thank you, family. Appreciate that. Much love. <laughs> yeah, what I want to do is I just want to speak to the family tonight about economic empowerment. What that does essentially is that's going to create a lot of financial freedom. Um, what I have is like sort of like I call it four pillars. Those four pillars are really going to allow you to create this foundation so you can have some financial freedom. Um, one of the first things is, is that what a lot of people sleep on is credit. You know, you look at credit and you say, I don't even know what my credit score is. You know, you need to go check out your credit score. You can actually request one free credit score every year. You can also go on Credit Karma. Go on Credit Karma. It's a free service online. Pull your credit score up. Most of the time, you're going to go out and you're going to try to apply for credit, and you need to know what, how financial institutions are looking at you. You know, to understand what your credit worthiness is. A lot of people don't understand that, and if not, then you're going to pay more money. Right. Um, if you understand your credit, you want to at least have a minimum of a 620 when you go to borrow money. 720 is really desirable because it's going to allow you to put you in that upper echelon. It's going to let you a plus borrower. Credit, you know, you can, you can borrow up, you can borrow x amount of money because you have this good credit. The worse your credit is, the more you're going to pay. Right. So if I go get a card with great credit, I'm paying 2.5 percent. You get a bad credit, you're paying 10 percent. Your that's eight percent difference. That 8% can't go back into investing, can't go into savings or create an emergency fund. It's going to pay a bank because your, your credit is not, you're not worthy. Right. And you have to build your profile. So one first thing you want to do is look at your credit. Make sure your credit is good. Make sure it's tight. And when you look at your credit, creditors are looking at a few things. They're looking at your trade lines. They're looking at how you pay. And they're looking at your credit score. So if I look at your trade lines and I say, okay, you got a Best Buy, you got a Marshalls, and you got a, a, a Exxon gas, gas card. Those are not real strong trade lines. Right. A good trade line is an installment loan, like a car. 
Right. Right. You have another credit card, like a Visa or a MasterCard. Even though it causes a debt. Even though it causes considered a debt, but when it right. comes to the trade line on a business or on your trade credit, it Correct. looks good. Right. Because what you it is I mean? is that it, all it is is a track record. Right. I want to see how you pay you, your bills. Right. If you had the money, you wouldn't borrow the money. So, Facts. Right. So you want to borrow the money? I want to see if you have your ability to pay back. It's the same thing on the street. Mm -hmm. D let me see if, how your name is on the street. If your name is good, then I'll, I'll front you. Right. Your name is bad, I can't front you. That's real. Or you have to pay more money up front or you get less. And what you do is you're going to pay less throughout your whole life if you don't fix your credit. You're going to repeatedly pay money. You're going to wonder why, man, I'm not getting ahead. You're not getting ahead because you're paying 12 extra percent every single month. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that that's very important. The next thing it is, that once you establish your credit and you say, I have X, Y, and Z credit score, it's strong enough, you want to look at your utilization. Your utilization is very important because creditors don't like you to use more than 30% of what you borrow. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit, you want to keep it at $300. If you go over $300, that's going to reduce your credit score. Every month you over 300, 30%, your credit score can go down. Every mm -hmm. single month, or a point or two points, or it'll just sit there and it'll move sideways. You won't even gain anything, you won't lose, but it'll just sit there. You, see, you're talking about credit, since you're speaking about credit. Right. You know, um, I think a lot of people don't understand, like, on a real general term, like, how this whole credit thing came about, right. since we're speaking about credit right. tonight. Like, you brought up economics, and obviously our system is now built off of credit and debt. Right. So, with that being said, when we're dealing with credit and debt, mm -hmm. we got to look at how did that come about? Right. So, do you know when that came about as far as credit and debt and how we established this in the system of I mean, there's so many debt and credit, you know? ways to look at that, and we can go back to the, the history of this country, yeah, yeah, and it little... can get really broad. But if we just deal with the three repositories, which right. is the Equifax, TransUnion, and what's up, Experian. Experian. If you look at those, those are just private companies. They're private. All, they're all private companies, and they decided that you're gonna, they're going to report your information. Right. And what happened is that a lot of other companies came in and they said, hey, I want to be able to, to understand what my bar, the risk is I'm taking before I give this person some money or I'll, I'll extend some credit out to them. So they went to these people, which is, uh, what is it, Fair Isaac? I believe that's what it's called. Right. And that's what they got together and they said, hey, look, we want you to be able to tell me if this person is credit worthy. What, what, when you say that, though, right? people, people think in their mind that credit and the government, it's not, they're not connected. And you know, you said private. You mentioned right. that the, the same companies that are rating you for your credit are private entities. Mm -hmm. So that don't mean, they're, they're, that has nothing to do with the government, obviously. You know what I'm saying? So like, you getting your credit together, and the right. people that set up this system for you to be now rated mm -hmm. based off of your actions and record of what you've done in the system. Right. Of what you bought, what you paid for, what you leveraged. Right, gain losses, all that. Mm -hmm. It's basically a mathematical system. Right. You know I mean, right, because it's it's yeah, right, counting they, your debt and credits of what you put in and what you take out or what you owe still and right. what you don't owe still. I mean, to keep it simplistic, but it obviously, like you said, it could be broad. And when we go to the understanding of certain things and how it's attached to yourself and how it got to attach right. to who, who you call ourselves a person. Right. You know, to your credit being a business as well, being separate. Right. Can you, can you touch on well, that's, business that's, being separate from right, personal? Right. That personal credit, you're going to deal with those three repositories. Now, if you're dealing with business, you're looking at Duns and Bradstreet, and I, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head, but those are, that's a whole other credit reporting agency. Mm -hmm. Those credit reporting agencies are on the consumer level. So on the consumer level, you're going to be dealing with those three entities. Right. Right. And those are the ones that what has happened is that all the companies, the banks and stuff, they decided that they were going to go with these people. They picked one of the three. To go with, and, they, and that's why those people are in business. Right. It's just like anything else. It's, right. it's privatized, but it does help them. But it Shit. also it makes them money because essentially you can charge people a lot more money if in fact their credit profile is not sufficient. Right. That's right. So now if I let one back to what I was saying with the thirty percent utilization, as soon as you say I have a thousand dollar credit limit and you're now taking three hundred dollars and you floating that every single month over three hundred dollars, your credit score starts to go down. So what you want to do is that if you can't pay. If you, you don't want to go into a $500 debt on $1,000. No, you don't. Because you're over 50% utilization. Your credit score is going to tank every single week. Every single month you have that, you're going to have it. Plus, you, once you get past 30 days with that, you're paying interest. Who wants to pay interest? And that kind of leads me into my next thing because you want to reduce your debt. I'm looking at your credit report. It's a certain factors that, that starts your credit report. I'm looking at the length of your, your credit, how long you had credit, how, 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 how you pay people back. What your credit score actually is. What do you have credit for? 
And those things are some of the main factors of how they establish your credit score over time. And that's what you want to be focused on too. So build good, strong trade lines. Try to keep your interest rate low. Keep your interest rate low by building your credit score. You got to build your credit score in order for you to move forward because you can't get financially free if you don't know what your credit score is. You're going to pay too much in interest. Real quick, you know, I just pulled up something and um, I asked a question while you were talking and it said, I, I went to Google, you know what I'm saying, just in case. And I have, I'm going to hope, you know, Kofi real quick, dig in just on this while we're having this topic tonight because right. when did, as I asked, I asked the question, when was credit started mm -hmm. and um it gave me back uh the first credit card was the diners club, diners club. card in 1950 that's correct. that's correct 1950 yeah all right so the card was used for the travel of entertainment and the balance had to be paid every month every month so like the next one was amex and they did the same thing so so we didn't get into credit until 1950 people actually using the concept of credit right and the way that we use it now until 1950 right all right so that needs to just be understood so people understand how long we've been dealing with this system of credit and debt. Right. Debtors and creditors. And creditors. Public or private. Right. However, you're matter. being used or right. maintaining or using it yourself. Right. Exactly. Get it? Yep. Because you could be used by it or you could be the one using it. Right. can be using it. It's a tool. And sometimes we get used by the tools or the machine or right. whatever you want to call it, right? And that's what we want to talk about is being able to flip it around. Correct. So you using it now. Use it for yourself. Using you and you, you don't know what's going on. You got this bad credit and you're going begging people for, for money. And they're saying, okay, you, you can't get any money. You don't understand why you can't get it. But you know, because right. most of the time your credit is not good. You say, man, how's your credit? You going to buy a car? Oh, man. You know, the anxiety, you start sweating, you start looking around. Man, I don't, I don't even know what my credit score. I think I got a five something. Well, that's, that doesn't make any sense. You're, trying to, you're in this game, and you don't even understand. You don't have the materials and the tools in order for you to win. That's a tool. Your right. credit score is a tool because you're going to pay a lot of and Same thing with understanding how to use your credit. Going back to that, that utilization, mm -hmm. if you keep yourself on the 30% utilization, those credit reports, the um, reporting agencies, they bless you. Every month, you'll see three, four, five incremental, incremental greens over the fact of like maybe like six months. You'll see yourself go up 20 points. Another thing is, too, Look at your credit report. It may be something on there that doesn't belong there. Right. So, you know, you go and you saw, and right now, Check this yourself. is easier. Back in the day, you used to have to mail people and write letters. Now you can just go online, create an account with Experian or Credit Karma, and you can dispute it right online. That's with real. With a click of a button. So now you can That's get real. inquiries of one to three points. So you may say, man, I got six inquiries. You get those off. If you can take them off, that's 18 boosts in your credit. 18 points you get a boost on. Just like that. Just like that. Right. And then you start keeping on the 30%. The, thing, the reason that 30% is so important is because it, 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 allow, it tells people that I'm not poor and I'm not just trying to make a run in the bank. Mm -hmm. I had a $1,000 credit limit and I ain't just go charge $1,000 up. Max out. Max yeah. out. And then keep that balance there and pay the $25 a month forever. No, I said I don't need to, I'm reasonable. I'm taking $25, $250 out on $1,000. And I'm paying it off at the end of 30 days. So this way, the interest rate on most credit cards is 17 to 23, 26%. Wow. Right. So you think about well, it. Right? I mean, that should be average understanding. But these days, though, people use credit all the time now. So I think I will think that okay. people know. But most people don't. No. And most people don't read their contracts. They don't read the, the and, terms. And, and, yeah. People don't read their contracts. Yeah. People, especially now on the phone, you go into an app or whatever you're using. Right. They got terms and agreements. Yeah. And you just... Click it and keep Click it moving. Because right. you don't really, that's a whole nother, uh, that's, that's going to be another podcast. Right. But just to you know, touch on that, that, that also gets you caught into your credit situations where you can't actually, um, what you call, go against the credit things that you took because of the contract you signed. Right. So you get you caught up in the debt. Mm -hmm. And you might not really thought about it that way in a simplistic way when you was thinking about getting what you wanted. Right. But then the contract now has you caught up in a situation where it could be attached to you in a certain way and cause you harm. Right. Now, you know, people need to be, not ignorant to the blissness of uh, what they want and really understand I, how to use this credit and debt system. One way that a lot of people, a lot of people sleep on is when you're looking at your terms and conditions. When you look at your terms and conditions, you'll see that they say you can pay the minimum and you can also, if you pay the minimum, it's going to take you seven years to pay off three or $400 <laughs> <laughs> at paying $12 a month. Correct. Right? So what you want to do is you want to start chopping into that. You don't want to get to the point that you're paying because what happens is you read your terms and conditions, it says... Once you decide you want to go over that, we can charge you interest. The interest rate is a variable interest rate. They give you a range. They don't give you one number. They give you a range. So it starts off at 14% and it can go always to 26%. This is the kicker. If you late on your payment, 
they give you the highest interest rate. And it says that in the terms and conditions. So you can have a situation where you, you think you're taking care of your credit and you just missed one payment and now you're paying 26% interest rate on that same money. And then because you're not paying it off and you want to make these small installment payments on it, now you're carrying more of that debt, which means you pay more interest on debt and you paying less on the principal. Remember, you pay more interest, you pay less on the principal. That's real. So it means that now your term has got extended. Mm -hmm. So you just put you just digging a hole for yourself just because you decided to get a credit card or two and you didn't want to utilize it correctly. And you say, oh, I just got a card. I'm going to charge. I'm going to Macy's. I'm going here. I'm buying sneakers. And it's like, end of the day, you're looking at me and my credit score went down. But I got these credit cards. That's real. And, you go out, and then they want to give you another one. Another thing is, too, leave junk credit cards alone. Those store credit cards like Walmart and Old Navy Macy's and, shit. and stuff like that, leave them alone. Those are the easiest ones. We'll take 10% off the day. Man, you they be trying to give me credit the cards all the time. Right. They want to give you 10% off. No, man, right. I'll give you the credit card right now, man. I'll be like, Those man, are I'll just give cards. you the money, man. I'll give you the money. Right. See, I, I'm going to be real with you. So, you know, coming from my background of things, you know, we, we I mean, you're trying to get around the system. I know some people be mad, but right. I, as a black man, as they call us, so called, so speak, you know what I mean, as we labeled, I'm looking at it however I can get around the system so I can get what I can get. And that's the average person trying to get sure. away and survive in this system. Right. You know what I mean? You're trying to cut corners, get your money any kind of way you can get it, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in the clubs and throwing parties, it's cash. Right. You know what I mean? Before we, strictly before, I mean, I come from the era before throwing parties, before there was credit, like being used at the door, you could use your car, the cash app. And right. That wasn't there. That was, you pay your cash at the door, you keep it moving. And, you know, at the end of the night, you had a nice little bag of cash at the count. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you you write off what you write off. You got to be accountable for what you say you made and what you didn't make. Right. Nowadays, it's obviously because of this cash, the system is coming in place. And it gets harder and harder for business to write off and manipulate certain things as well. Because now we're actually going into an era of really credits and debits. Right. And cash is not as king as it used to be because of the system that's in place, digitally right. speaking. Right. Yeah, virtual. You know what I mean? Because as we said, it's... This credit system, digital system. Right. It was digital. Yeah. Before it was a ledger. It was digital. Yeah. Right? Before it was a ledger, so, now it's digital. So 1950, mm -hmm. it came digital. Mm -hmm. Credits and debits. Yeah. But no, it's, it's the next thing I'm going to point out, and we're going to go to some music real quick. Sure. And then we're going to come back, and um, we're going to touch on some other things. But I want to make sure I give this to y'all, to the public no, information. The U.S. government first found itself in debt in 1790. So, um... And this is during the Revolutionary War. You know, so during the Revolutionary War, we, we found ourselves in a nice major debt. So this is before 1950, obviously, and we're getting into a situation having credits and debt. Right. But debt, obviously, has been used, the word, way before the system is made. It's common sense, mm -hmm. right? But we're going to touch on that in a minute because there's a, there's a bigger issue yeah. to this right. word, credit and debtor. Sure is. Because <laughs> this word is synonymous with Slave and master. Sure. It is. Right? Sure yep. it is. I mean, just to keep it real. Right. I mean, slave, master, person that gives it's credit. Some called debt peonage. Uh, right. The person that gives credit is the master. Right. The person that's holding the debt right. is the slave. You know what I mean? Yep. So to turn that around, we have to understand the nature of this beast. I call it that because every system you contract yourself to or get into, you know what I mean, but are not of, you have to, it's outside of yourself. Now right. it's got a hold of you if you don't have a hold of it. Right. So I just want to make sure we touch on that. And real quick, going to come. Hey, Blaze, hit me with a couple songs in, in the mix. Campaign Man. continues. I tell him it's a party. I'm going to give you this quick little clip. I'm going to give you this quick little clip. Mac Illa. You can call me Yogi. Young OG intelligence. You know, Illa, that's the God. Mac, that's the son. I might come from a Scottish origin or some shit. Gaelic or some shit. Irish, some shit. Mac, we know it's what it is. But um, economy. 1530s household management is basically the meaning of this word and where it came from, the Latin. Uh, source French economy, Spanish economy, or whatever it is. You know, I fuck up words. But um, German, from the Greek, you know what I'm saying? The household management thrift, and from manager steward, steward. So, you know, understand district near economy, frugality, judicious, 
It's from like the 1660s that comes down here and it says at the bottom is etymology. But it's word. 1821 is the term advertising. At first meant simply cheaper. And then bigger and thus cheaper per unit or amount. Economy, that's an adjective. Because obviously we're talking about credits and debts. So we're going to obviously understand that credit and debts fall into economy. Economics. So we want to understand the origin of this shit. Just for people that might not know, you know, just a, a cliff note. Just to drop on it, you know what I mean, before we go into that next vibes, what we're talking about, you know, just some factologies of the things, you know, and get to the real. BSB, that's the brotherhood, you know what I mean? I got to give a shout out to the BSB, Baron Sandy brothers. You know, Baron, we went out to Louisiana, fuck with the Washita, and, you know, we came back, nobility. They got to keep it 100. That was a title that was given, honorably speaking. Turner family, Washita. Samdi. Samdi is the highest point of enlightenment. That's the etymology of that word real quick. You know, that's the peace. You're going to find it. You're going to see the light. Before or at death, you're going to get to that light. And we all going to have to understand that. We're trying to spread some peace and some light right now to y'all. You know, our plan is to make sure that everybody understands how they come, become autonomous, self-governing in every manner possible because we in that time in 2020 where you know i try not to get caught up in the politics even though i be you know i get caught up in the politics you know i care about my people sometimes they go certain ways and there's certain lot of information that might not be shared by the major media sources and you know i think the major media sources are paid programming i can go into that too as well but paid programming is something that you know has sponsors and has a corporation and have an agenda for what they want put out so people that work for the paid programming sources have an agenda and they don't write their scripts totally by themselves they got to get approved actually because i went to school for public relations famu 98 by the way so you know i understood that that's why you gotta go to school for it to even get on the radio there's licensings and all that stuff to come and you have to stick to a script you know what i'm saying program managers and all that kind of stuff comes into play but what you can play and what you can't not play so pro paid programming is set up a certain way so we can't, in this day and time, just listen to just the main media sources. You have to go do your research on everything that's being put in front of you. And as they say, there's a saying, um, believe half of what you see and half of what you hear. Or is that other way around? Okay, uh, hold, my fault. Um, say, say that again, I apologize. Believe none of what you see and half of what you hear. Exactly. So, you know, as I just said that, you know, I was... Off top of the head, freestyle. Uh, it's all good. All right, but you know, but at the end of the day, that's how it is. So we got to be careful how we um look at things, how we hear things, and not believe in things. We're not in the time of belief. We're in a time where we have to know. And some of our traditions are based off of beliefs, and not off the know. That's not science. That's not mathematics. We got to get to that. You can't duplicate it. You can't develop a foundation. Facts. There's no science. No science, no foundation. You spookism. Can't you can't duplicate it either. Spookism is gone. No. Nah. You know what I mean? Superstition is like it's something. Is it has a? It's a variety. It's, it's more of a variety with the superstition. Right. It could be so many different things. Instead of you saying, "Hey, you know what? The fire is hot." There's no question that the fire is hot. If you put your hand in the fire, you're gonna realize it's hot. It's not subjective. You right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So when you're dealing with it, say, "Hey, man. Oh, that's the wind. I'm gonna call the wind." X, Y, and Z, and that, that's a such and such spirit. Okay, that's cool, but then if you understand ap atmospheric pressure and you understand when hot and cold and different pressures mix together and you understand how wind is created, it takes away a lot of that mysticism. Mm -hmm. And you understand that there's a science to stuff instead of you thinking that, oh, man, there's some man somewhere that's creating this rhythm or it's a spirit that's doing X, Y, and Z. It becomes spooky, and it doesn't it seem like spooky. you're a part of it. We are, we are part of this realm, the natural realm. Right. That makes it seem like there's this other third dimension, and we're not a part of that anymore. You understand what I'm saying? And that's how people get into this worship thing, too, with that. I mean, I think it's just miseducation. And we've been doctrinized by the system. Superstitious. To be superstitious and dogmatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And then it feeds to your ego when you become good at that dogmatic. You're, you're thinking that because what you've been taught, maybe, and you remember what you've been taught, it becomes like redundant because you, re you repeat like a parrot what you've been given. Right. Not what you know. 
a lot of time what you've been given. Yeah, just regurgitating. Yeah, regurgitation is not a good thing to have. You know what I mean? Because nothing stays with you. You know, you take it, you eat it, you shit it out, you put it back in. Right. You know what I mean? But you need things that gonna stay with you, style it like your health. Yeah, you because know? everything right. is as within, so without. When right, it comes exactly. to that understanding, mm -hmm. micro, macro, yeah. Mac, micro, macro. Yes. Yeah. As above, so below. below. Right. Yeah. Universe, Earth. Mm -hmm. Simple science. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? No, no spooky shit. No, no spooky <laughs> shit. All right. So, um, spirit. Because you just brought up spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the way, we got a thing we call spectrum. And I deal with acronyms. And I, that was my influence meant through my school of thought with 5% and mm -hmm. college days. I fell in love with acronyms. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, spectrum is like SOMDs, enlightenment, which SOMD means. Mm -hmm. Political, economic, cultural. Trust, reuniting Maroons. Because we've been Marooned in America. And we, we've been Marooned here in our own land. Right. Commercially speaking. Because com business and economics is really what's taken us off the land. When we look at right now. I mean, we can go back into the history of other things. But right, right, right. when we're talking about right now, presently speaking, we've been knocked off the land through corporations and situations that come in, formally speaking, into our communities. Right. And, and are economically able to affect and we're, we're, we're consumers of those things that come into our communities that don't benefit exactly. us. We were the economy in the beginning. Right, we were the economy. Right. We, we were, we, yes, we were actually literally the stock. Right. Well, everybody's the stock now, but back then we were the stock. Right. We formed Wall Street. Wall Street. The concepts. We formed the medical right. and the insurance industries. None of those existed prior to slavery. You know I mean? But, you know, people use dealing with the economics and our, our will to come together like how we used to play in sports and stuff. You have a spirit, you know what I mean? You have the spirit, the cheerleaders that come in and push the, e the effort of our, of, of, to get us raise into that spirit. kind of, you know what I mean? To raise our spirit. That's the way we use it in an action, agitative mm -hmm. word. Not a noun, but right. speaking in an agitative way of speaking, you know? Right. But when it, when it comes to the etymology of it, it says, you know, the meaning to carry it secretly, you know, spirit. And it says um, more active or energetic of the blood, alcohol, etc. And for spirit now, you know, the meaning uh, to carry off or away secretly. So, you know, from the verb, that's a verb breakdown of the word spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because we be, we be in an action of spirit. Yeah, yeah, action, and right. Alcohol, obviously, is a spirit based off of what right. it does to your spirit, your soul. It influences you. But economically, we're not influenced the same way. And why are we, why are we out of touch in this day and time with really all the different resources that leads us to Put ourselves what we talked about earlier as far as credit and debt, understanding these things, what's going to allow us to ball out as people want to do whatever, right. you know, cliche terms we might use these days in certain manners. But in real life, realities, resources, tangibles, right. that's going to allow us to benefit our communities and ourselves, obviously, first, self-preservation. But Well, first, you got to understand that where you at, you, you woke up and you were in war. You woke up, you're in war, and you're in the white supremacy. Right. So it takes you a while to understand that concept. This war been going on, and then you were awakened. You were born, you were awakened, and you had to figure out, wow, there's something going on here. And then when you, right when you figure it out, it's little too late because it's already a system that's been going on. It's a religion. It's not even a system. It's, this is their religion. This is what they, they pledge to. So when you wake up, meaning that when you're born and you start to get a little knowledge yourself, that's when you start to recognize that, wow, this has been going on all this time, and I'm at war, and I need to get myself, I need, it's time to wake up. Not mm -hmm. just wake up, because I hate to use that term. It's overused. It's time for you to assume the proper position and act accordingly. Act if, you, accordingly. if you're at, at war, you need to be in war mode. You know, Your well, mind has to be I, I want to make sure, you know, because, you know, some people are very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Right. I got to make sure, when you hear the word war, because people, especially nowadays, you right. know, with this climate we're in, Politically, between right. the two parties and the far left and the far right. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, since you just, I got to say this real quick. This whole thing about us, because everybody in this room looks like me. Right. And we're considered the Negro or, you know what I mean? That's, we're going to touch on that in a minute. But as us to be considered the American Negro or from the islands of the Americas, you know what I'm saying? Mixed mm -hmm. together with the indigenous people and whatever background that states to from your ancestry and your heritage. We're considered black Americans today. African Americans coined from Jesse Jackson. You know what I'm saying? 88. Right. But at the end of the day, however name you go by, you're labeled black in America. We can't get away from that stigmatism that we've been given. Right? Because right? mm -hmm. we, in the Constitution, we was written in. 
So we have something in common if we're all black, that we were written in to this constitution that we built. We built the system and then right. we was written into it as if we we're second class, well, it's whatever. Written in for protection. But we went to protect them, not, not us. Not for our, our protection. What do you mean, the 13th or the 14th? Right, that, right. That was our, well, so-called uh, protection. That, that wasn't protection. That was like, right. I mean, that was like a, um, like, like, like a babysitting situation that needed to be put on paper a certain way. Well, what it is is that they said that you're free, but you're not really free. You know. So the um, Emancipation Proclamation. Right. That's, that's just a, I mean, I'm, pro, I'm proclaiming. Okay, now. You uh, understand uh, what I'm saying? Uh, wait. I'm, it's a claim. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something that's written into law. A, a proclamation. You when you we proclaim to be something, right. you're proclaiming. I mean, right. you could go put something on the record if anybody doesn't know. Right. And right now in your county. Right. And proclaim something. Proclaim something. And if, if nobody comes against it. Right. That's what it is. This is what it is. Amen. Right. So it be. But they came against it. And that's why we were not a protected class. We're still not a protected class. So when we right. were allowed to be free, we didn't have anything. And we wanted to be able to say, hey, we wanted some. We definitely wanted to be able to socially integrate. We couldn't do that, but we needed some protection because we didn't want to be going back into debt, being in, debt. Back into, you know, we didn't want to go back into that Jim Crow. Well, Jim Crow hadn't even come in yet. We didn't want to have, but we wanted some protection. But so you, they say, hey, look, I'm going to give you some protection. All right. And I'm, I'm going to write it. Remember when they write and everything and they say, we the people? Right. We the people is talking about white people as a collective. Wait, 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 wait. So then. Wait a second, though. Go ahead. Wait, wait. When, when you, from the understanding of America mm -hmm. and its history, when you say we the people. Right. So, you know, I know we. I don't like to go very show off, but we're going we're dealing with information, so we're gonna get make sure people get it a certain way. Mm -hmm. So we the people doesn't come from white people. All right. Right. I, I, the I the know. concept of we the people right. come from the great law of peace of the Iroquois Confederation that got with the thirteen colonies mm -hmm. and they you know, got with them and they got together and they they formed something which became, you know, the Continental Congress basically got with the Iroquois and they formed the United States of America. You know what I'm saying? And things were borrowed from different situations sure. to make up what we have today as a constitution. But, right. you know, the, the whole we the people part came strictly from the natives, right. as they would call them today in America, which is, I still, you know, based off of the information, we're labeled that. Right. But when they say we the people, they're specifically talking about white people. This is written for them. Well, for them, right, correct. Right, how, they them, right. how they did it, how they did it, how they did it. They reversed it. Right. They used our shit against right. us, basically. Right, exactly. And then you get penciled in 13 to the 15th. 13 to the 15th. They give you some protection. And they also say, hey, look, if you, those who Don't are, do the right things, those you're who now. Those that, 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 that are in bondage or out of bondage. Bondage. Those in debt, and that, that pretty much covers black people. And they, they were talking about exclusive, right exclusive there. information um, that was di directly for you. It says that you could be taken back into jail. Right. If, in fact, you become a criminal again. Facts, facts. So what it is is that I can't get you with slavery. I want to industrialize the whole United States right now. And Industrial. Get everybody. Get everybody. The Social Security card and all that came around. The same thing with your credit. Right. And that was privatized, too, and the government came and they took that over. Facts. I want to get everybody into this system to where now I got a Social Security number. I'm going to tag you like you're a piece of Everybody. Cap. Everybody has a Social Security number. Everybody. And also, too, you're paying taxes now because I can tax that Social Security what number. What happened to the um, tax station without representation? I thought that we were right. supposed to be, I thought we were supposed to be taxed, you know what I'm saying? We're right. supposed to be the people of the, we, we the people of the Republic, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but why are the Republic being, if we the body of, the, of, of what they call the United States of America, which is credits and debits dealing with corporation situations, sure. and the United States is definitely that in this day, time and day is how sure they're they registered yep. as a corporation. So, and That's it's why they're in D.C., uh, right, That's not the United States. The, it's a district, right. and they're in a district that protects them to do their business. And then the other people tap into the resources that they're able to sure. affiliate for, for us. They're basically like our um, in-between, like a middleman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're really just a corporation. Right, they're a corporation. So what, what, what people don't understand, though, is still in your states, you have a constitution as well. Sure. And then you are in contract to whatever you register, usually first, Five as months. most of us through DMV, when we get our driver's license, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to be able to get permission, which is also... But then the bond, there's a bond established with those things that's dealing with credit. So someone gave you credit because someone gave you a bond to be able to drive the insurance. Right. All those things are things given to you because you didn't establish it yourself. No. You don't have the liabilities if you get an accident or something like that. So all these things are attended to credit and debt as well. All things are attached to the same system right. we talked about previously on this, you know, our first show. But if as you far have as money, economics. you don't have to depend on credit. You Correct. don't have to depend on credit. If I have $45,000 and my car costs twenty. dollars I go in to buy a car. Right. And I say, oh, mm -hmm. this house is 180. I go in to buy the house I want that. Uh, give me that. It is what it is. So give me you don't, that. Right. You don't, have, you, don't, you don't involve these people at all. That's, That's why I was saying that one of the next things, like when your credit is straight, 
is that you got to reduce your debt. And you also got to know what's good and what's bad debt. So mm -hmm. most people tell you, oh, man, all debt is bad. No, that's not right. You got to understand what an asset is and what it's a liability. Most people think a house, oh, I got a house. That's an asset. No, it's not. No, when it it's not. When no, it, it becomes, isn't. When it, when it becomes a rental property and then somebody's paying you to help you pay off that mortgage and then you're getting a, a profit, then you're getting passive income and then that becomes an asset. It's not an asset. Another thing is, too, a good versus bad debt. Your, your good debt is when you say, you know what? I'm going to take out a car loan and the car loan is only 2%. 2%. 2% car loan versus me... And some people say, oh, no, but you're not supposed to carry that. It is good debt because I'm going to go and take the rest of my money and invest it. Instead of me paying off that car and paying off $45,000 on that car, I'm going to pay the 2% on that car every single month. And instead of me putting it into and buying a whole car off, I'm going to take the rest of that money and invest it. Okay. Because uh, annualized return in the stock market averages about 7%, an annualized return. Okay. So if you're getting 7%, let's say you took that, that extra $30,000 instead of paying off that car, and you put it in the market at 7%, I don't know the numbers right now, but let's say at the end of the day, you should probably have like fifty six to maybe $60,000 over the course of that, that car loan term, the term of that loan. Mm -hmm. Over five to six years, you will have that return. Or maybe 10 years, you will have that return. It makes more sense for you to go ahead and put the money in the market than it would for you to, to go and finance that car, put, oh, pay the car off. Because they're giving you 2%. Okay. That's good money to borrow. That's, good, that's, that's, that's some good debt for you to borrow against because the interest rate is so low. Now, if your credit is smashed, then they're going to give you 12, 15, 13%. And you know at that point, you want to try to pay that car off as quick as possible. Right. Because all your money is going to interest and not principal. That's real. And you're getting rate because now that extra, I'm paying two, you're paying 15. That extra 13%, I'm, I'm investing that extra 13% every single month. That's real. You're not investing that. You're putting it into this guy and you're helping the banks get fat and rich. And that's why you got to start with your credit first. Because you this will be, it's a never in the story. Yeah. With the mortgage too, you know. We, we, we go, I'm going to go into that word. That's going to be one of the words, too, as well. You know, I know me, me and Kofi were building on, on the word solvent earlier. You know what I'm saying? And, like, this word, dealing with credit and debt, when you, when you were born, you was born, were you born in debt or were you born with credit? There's the people, like, when your mama signed off on their birth certificate, you were born in the hospital. Did the insurance policy your parents had, if they didn't have an insurance policy, like who covered the, the coverage for you to be, how much does it cost to have a baby? $6,000. All right, 6000 right? So did you pay the cash? Like, did the average person give the hospital $6,000 when they had a child? No, to ask your first question is you went into debt when you were born. Correct. Your parents went into debt. Or somebody. Right. Because I don't, I don't remember, I, I ain't gonna lie, you know, I, I got, we all got children, right? But did you get, did you pay for each one of them cash when you, when you went no, to the I hospital? I paid though. Huh? I paid. You paid. You paid the money. Yeah, I paid. Word. Money. That's different. See you know what I'm saying? Like that's great though too. See, because a lot of people don't. I, so I mean, what happened? I don't is hear a lot of people that do my that. My first like, child, I paid. Oh, six grand. Here's a six grand for my, my child. Next, my next two. No. That's real. Because I know how to work the credit. Back See, then, I didn't credit. understand how to work the credit. Credit. I was. Oh, they're gonna put it on my credit. They're gonna do this, this, and that. And it's like whatever. Medical gonna drop off in seven years. But wait, 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 so, wait. Stop, 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 stop. Tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in, <laughs> tap in, tap in, tap in. See you know. With credit, since you're speaking of credit, we're talking about generational wealth that comes with credit. Right. When we leave credit, or we will leave debt. You can leave debt for your children when you die, right. or you can leave them you credit. You leave my asset. Right. Your, asset. Well, your credits obviously help you get assets. Right, but you can build assets without having credit. Of course, right. of but course. The, if you, if but, you got but, the money, right. but you, most you, you, people doing who are thing, very wealthy... Don't use that. Then no. you listen. You got to use other people's money. Right. Well, OPP. You know what I mean. You'll use other people's money. OPP. You know, it's so, the old school. If I got five hundred eighty thousand dollars, it makes more sense for me to go to a bank and say, "Hey, look, I want to put twenty percent down. I'll put my down payment down." Well, yeah. you know that establishes some equity and gives me some leverage in, in the loan, and that's great. I put my twenty percent down instead of me putting five eighty. I just risked all my money. What if the market takes a downturn two mm. weeks from now? Now what? The house is worth three hundred. I paid five eighty. I've kind of not, it's an unrealized loss, but the unrealized loss would be about $200,000. Mm -hmm. But now if I went and got that from the bank, I'd be like, oh, I don't care. I'm not selling the house right now. I got a tenant in there who's paying me, I'm making $400 a month on the tenant and they're helping me pay down my principal. I don't care. In another five years, I'll get that. The house will be worth that again. You know, but, you understand what but, I'm saying? But, so right, you, but when you say with the house, we took, you're speaking on houses. Mm -hmm. So before I even get to the, the definition of this word, solvent, to, to, you know, right. we're going to go into the word mortgage. Right. 
And and when you, when you take on a house, people buy a house a lot of times. It's still definitely better because you can leverage than renting. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Obviously, hands down. It's a totally different you, It's concept. a way better situation. Right. It becomes an asset. If you're doing what you're right thing, you can pull from it. You can do what you need to do. If you come mm-hmm. in hard times, you can lay off. You get off your job. You can, right. you know what I mean? You can do what you need to do. You yeah, know what I mean? You got equity. space to, you know what I mean? Equity within yourself, too, when you have that peace of mind, I right. think. You know what I mean? But at the same time, um, there's still the thing called mortgage. Mm-hmm. And this word mortgage still is a contract situation right. when people sign their contract. For the house that they buy, that leaves them most times if they're not smart, they end up not beating the system. No. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So like even though you bought it and you're and you're better than renting, you're still in a trap if you don't be smart about what you're doing. Right. With whatever contract you enter. Mm-hmm. Unless you have the cash to buy the whole thing. Right. Yourself. Or your interest rate is low. But then you're still paying taxes. That's financing. a whole nother Right. Because what happens after a while, what if you're investing that money instead of Let's say it's two ways to look at it. You can attack the debt and say, man, mortgage is debt. It is a debt. Right. And I'm going to put everything in my hard-earned money, and I'm going to pay the X, Y, and Z on the principal every year. I'm going to pay extra. I'm going to pay extra. And you'll get the debt knocked out. Shit, I'm a room living. I don't want nothing to do with the debt at all. See, the thing we ain't it, supposed to be involved the with that. The thing of it is, is that, <laughs> remember that there's tax implications. Debt who? In this, this, it's, a, it's a tax break if, in fact, you have a house. You can't write off the mortgage interest. So you're yeah. going to be paying more taxes because you don't have that house. The interest rate low, it makes more sense to allow that mortgage to, to sit there and you pay that my monthly payment. Then to pay it off. Then to pay it off because you're not going to get the mortgage interest deductions when you go to do your taxes. Now, some people, now, if you're not worried about that, it's not a big deal. Because if you're an employee, a W-2 kind of person, that's what you want to be in. You know, just do whatever. Now, if you're an investor, it may make more sense for you to say, hey, you know what? I got three or four, five, six houses and I'm letting them, I'm letting them float. I'm just... My, 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 my tenants are actually paying the principal. I don't pay anything on the principal. I'm in no rush to pay off that debt at all. Well, and at any, any moment in time, because I had the property for 10 years, I've now built a whole bunch of equity in the property. So now if anything happened, I could sell one property, I could refinance, and there's always some money there. You understand what I'm saying? That Being an investor and being a consumer, you just got one house, it probably makes sense for you to try to tear that, tear that mortgage up if you know your interest rate is pretty high. Yeah. Anything over 3%, you want to be trying to tear that mortgage up. You know, like if you're on the 3% or like you are, let's say you're on the 5%, then you want to keep that because you can invest the rest of it in the market. But you have to invest your money. Gotcha. You got to have an emergency fund and you got to invest your money. You know, that's, you know, that's at the way at the bottom of my little tier system. But you got to invest your money because all that excess that you have that you say, hey, I got my credit good. I got all my trade lines in order. I know what my credit score is. Um, I'm making enough money now so I can put some stuff to the side. I got an emergency fund. I reduce all my debt. Now I can start to invest that money. Because if you invest the money, money's sitting there. The bank is paying you zero point zero zero one zero on your money. You know, with that being said, I'm I'm gonna um say this on the first show that everything you just said with that part is like a plan. And people need to understand that plan. It's simple. Right. It's simple. But, but we're gonna make it simple for them. I'm gonna get some content from you. Right. And I'm gonna post it for them to understand what you just said right there. You know what I mean? That right there is simple part. You know what I mean? As far as emergency money. And you have to invest that money because the bank, you're not making no money on the money. I understand you got to hold it somewhere because back in the day you had to hold your gold or whatever resource you might have called, you know, economically helping you. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you had to hold it somewhere. I mean, unless it was cotton. Well, what you do now is that you got high yield savings plan because the Fed has been pumping so much money into the economy. That's you probably heard this term before. It's called quantitative easing. Mm. Right. That's no, no, the, no, no, no. Go, go into that. Well, quantitative easing, what it is, is that I just keep pumping money out. In the economy, so the Fed say, "Hey, you know what? Because you know the Feds control money. Yeah, they federal. control how much money come out. You right. get too much money come out, and then you have inflation. Inflation goes up. The cost right. of things go up because right. everybody got a, a dollar. It's, there's no scarcity there. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now with quantitative, these all this money's coming out. So now the banks are not offering anything as interest rate. The CDs, certain bonds used to get a real nice interest rate. Now you at zero. You because- know, I, I have to just. It would, Everything we're going on right now and everything you said, it just still takes me to the dawning fact that we got into the situation of credit and debt and how America was obviously, the dollar bill was backed by silver and gold. Gold, right. And in 1913, Woodrow Wilson makes the decision to... Take us off the gold standard. Take us off the gold standard and take in foreign money to 
because they were in debt again. Right. From obviously what they I said earlier doing about doing when they first went in debt during the Revolutionary War yep. because of wars. Wars put them in debt. Right. America has always been so in wars from the beginning of time of their existence. But and they sold American people. Right. So we've been sold out right. and we became the debt that they economized for their debt at the right. time in order for them to get what they need to run their system after 1913. Right. Shadow property. You know, shadow right. property. Right. So, I mean, today in time, even though we were slaves or indentured servitude, the word indenture goes right back to a debt. Right. See, all these things attached right. to economy. So, Peonage. Oh, pen, all these words really go back to an economic understanding we, because cause we're the economy. Because right. we're the economy. Right. We're the mathematics. You know what I'm saying? What Good or bad. It, it's, Credit it's, or debt. You know what I'm saying? Free labor. Free labor, free labor or paid is, labor. establishes your economy. The economy is what, when I go into a place, whatever natural resources I can take out of that land, that's the economy. You know, well, see, I think a lot of people, since we're talking about economy and the word indentured, and the word indentured, obviously is dealing with a debt that needs to be paid. So you're going to be in servitude, servitude until you pay off that debt, unless you have something substantially to clear the debt that is owed. Right. All right, so now there's a difference between indebt indentured servitude and then a slave. You know what I'm saying? Because the like, slave like is shadow slavery, and then you have indentured servitude. Correct. Now shadow slavery back then was just, the word slavery. First off, Slavic, Germanic word is dealing with a people that was on the lowest class in their time. Sure. At that era of time, which happened to be what we today call Caucasians, white people. Etc. Whatever Europeans, but because we really are Europeans too in some cases of our heritage, because mm -hmm. some of us come from that thirteen colony background. But at this time, white black understanding, whites at that time that had that background of a Slavic nature were considered. That's where the word slave was borrowed from to create this class of people that we use now in our everyday terminology. So again, though everything is connected to the debt and. A digital servitude led us to a situation where we just talked about 1913, we talked about economy, and everything dealing with the people has always been attached to what we call the economy, the trade system, you know what I'm saying? And it's important for us now to become autonomous in understanding how to take on the economy, because we are the economy. Right. Jay-Z said, I'm the business, you know what I'm saying? It's the business, right? right. I'm the business. So we got to understand that. You know what I mean? Rights off, right offs and everything. But right. we're gonna play some music real quick though. We're gonna come back to you. I appreciate y'all for tapping in, tuning in. Blaze, take over. Yeah, you listening to Super Blaze. Let's go. Freddie Gibbs, Freddie Gibbs been on fire. For the last two years. The Mad Lib joint. Yes, sir. Alfredo with Alchemist. He just been on fire. Freddie Gibbs been on fire. I don't know. Yes, sir. The last three albums, the man has been on. Man, yeah, mixtapes, everything. Everything. He, 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 everything he's touching right now. Seriously. Can't train. I don't know. I'm really. There's not a lot of artists that really can say they, they really touching him right now, in my opinion, as far as content over the last two years. I got to give him that credit, too, by the way. I mean, I just talked about Buster earlier, but like content, like presently speaking, artists doing their thing, like, I got to give him that, like, credence of he, he's on that right now. Like, ain't nobody dropping, like, Benny and all them got their nice joints, and there's certain people that got their, you know what I mean, singles and. You know, you always got Drake in, but consistent, like hip-hop, like everything, I give it to Freddie. Freddie, salute. Salute. Thriller campaign. The autonomous party. We're going to play one more track. We're going to get into the last. We're going to go to the after party and play some music for you, Vibe, with you real quick until 11 o'clock. We thank y'all for tapping in ahead of time. And next week, tap in a little earlier. We're going to be a little earlier. You know, it's our first time doing this with y'all, so tap in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say tap in. I mean, really, really, though, we, we in the background talking about this hip-hop because, you know, that's what we do. And, um, I mean, as we was just speaking, though, like, off-air, you know what I mean, that, like, Freddie's, the, the concept of hip-hop, even with Buster, who just I talked about earlier, right. is a concept. He, he knew how to do a concept, how to have your singles for the popular side and to make sure the body of work still felt out a certain way. So you you kind of followed the, the concept of the name of the album. You know what I'm saying? It fell in line. All the mm -hmm. songs fell in line. And I think a lot of people fell off of that understanding with, with the new age of just making the hits with social media and just, you know, the attention span ain't there. But for us old heads that are used to body of works, 
you know, with Freddie Gibbs, what he did with Mad Lib on his two albums with Mad right. Lib, what he did with Alchemist, what what you just said, what Benny Butcher did with, you know what I'm saying, with Hit Boy, what um Nas did with Kanye, what Nas did with Hit Boy, you know right. what I'm saying? Like these these concept albums, I think really are, are bringing back a hip hop understanding. Even though you still got your rap category of just hits and songs that play for the club and you vibe it. Right. You know what I mean? But I like that body of work. And I appreciate that body of work from a, from a cultural standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, you ain't always in the club. Yeah, you can play something when you drive and you can just listen to it. And understand the concept of what that artist is really kind of get out. It's a full Message album, wise. Too. It is full. full. You know full. what I'm saying? Back in the day you have Not street advertisers. song. You have full body. three street songs. You got one or two radio songs. Right. And then you have a love song. And you have something to be something from your own heart, from your heart, passionate about, what you, right? yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then that that be a, that's your complete album right there. It's you know things have changed. Still, no, we want to be the crunk. foundational we got, we went, things we went are always going to gonna be era. there though. We went from that crunk era, and then right after crunk, we got directly into trap and mumble rap. I mean, my son came up to me like almost ten years ago, and he was like, "Yeah, daddy, mumble rap," and I was like, "What? I what? Like, you can't yeah. invent nothing new. Rap, rap is rap." But it, you're right, they did do yeah, that. They did it. But it's a bunch of leaned out rappers, a bunch of leaned out little kids. <laughs> they own pills and they leaned out. That's that culture. Yeah, you know, I don't want to so, talk about them like gotta, that because I get you in trouble have your talking music about the young people. Going 5,000 beats per minute. I love you y'all, out, you but you know, up. some of the things that you've, <laughs> that you've taken. But I'm going to take responsibility. Right. And because, you know, I'm over, I'm over 40. And they say, you know, from the things, especially me being in the streets, parties and things that I've done. And surviving, you know what I mean? I can't play angel. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I ain't wild out when I was at a certain age. And You know what I mean? My people thought I was crazy at one point, probably, because of the culture that I was involved in and passionate about. You know what I'm saying? I'm still passionate about it. And I'm, I'm over 40. I'm oh, shit. Just an age that's a year over 40, by the way. I'm still young. But that means still that I've seen enough to be able to tell you that, like, things have changed. And But when someone can really stick to the foundation of hip-hop, and have that element there, you appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and with that being said, you know, that's why we're here for the culture right now on this show right now. Mm -hmm. But we want to give back to the community and the culture by giving you the tangibles. Like, you know, Dr. Claude Anderson dropped a book a long time ago to, when you look at time frame now, the Paranomics. And um, that's, like, in this time of day, we got to give it to him chopped up. Not like a whole book, like, we can't read a whole book these days how they're doing it, but we That's can give it, Kindle. yeah, right. You got to give it to them with, you know what I mean. <laughs> you got to give it to them in a certain way and feed it yeah, a certain way. No excuses yeah. these days. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of things that we think we know about our country. Even right now in our conversation tonight, just dealing with the, the conversation of credit and debit, which is attached to economics and how you're attached to it, how the system's attached to it, how we got involved with it, when it started. All those things were brought up tonight. You know what I'm saying? So. And we can go deeper into these things, of course, but we only have a certain amount of time to give you, but we want to make sure we give you some of it, and we, we, we expect you to go research, because I don't take you to take anything I say, by the way, my disclaimer, don't believe shit I say, go do your research. Sure. And that's just a factual thing you need to do. Yep. Period. You know what I mean? But the time is now for you to do that research. You know what I mean? Because you really don't know your future until you know your past. Right. And a lot of us don't know our past. Because we're using this term, you know, as I close out tonight, before we go into that after party mix with Super Blaze, you know what I mean? He's going to play some hot joints before we close out at 11 o'clock. And um, really, in reality, we have to really be aware of what's going on right now with the black community. You know what I'm saying? And we don't own a lot of things that's tangible in the black community that really benefit us when you look around, when you travel around in your black communities. Yeah, we got our clubs. We, well, right now, that's not even working right now, right? Because they just shut down a lot of the things that a lot of us did to make money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that's been cut out. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of businesses are closing. They say 47% of black community businesses, small businesses, closed during this pandemic, pandemic, whatever you look at it as. All right? So we are affected economically from what's going on right, currently right now. So it's, it's really important for you to really pay attention to what's going on and get in tap in to what you can get your resources to get tangible that's going to help you survive and thrive to be the best you want to be but you're going to need these resources to do it you know what well, i mean you know the thing of it is is that when you go around the united states and you show me where there's a real black community real 
And I say black no, no, community, real. not a black neighborhood, not where black people stay. No, no, I said that the other day. Community. I said that the other day. Like, I grew up across the street. We had a, a wash the clothes. corner store. We had a dry cleaner. Right. We had a tailor. You owned it. We had meat. We had a beauty parlor. You got the corner you store. Your cut. You can go over here. You can shoot right. a game of pool. You got the arcade. The lawn man. You got another convenience store. The roof man. You got, a, you got, a, you got all these things. So <laughs> you don't money, have the money changed right. hands. The so money went down. Economy. Right, so you don't have an economy, and that's why when things get economy. bad, nobody's gonna come patronize you because there's where are you? You're not economy. there. Another thing is too, if you go back to those statistics, black people didn't, black businesses didn't go to, they didn't establish themselves correctly in order to get those PPP loans. Yeah, so a lot of them did not get. I mean, there was a lot of them, thousands of black people, <laughs> black business owners that did not, they didn't qualify because you understand too, your credit's not good, you're not qualifying because once again. You may have to pay some of this back, and your credit worthiness doesn't prove on paper. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people didn't qualify for that, and a lot of people didn't understand how to fill it out. Right. You understand? And some people didn't qualify because guess what? You never filed a tax return. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But going back to being black and you being in business, you don't have a community. If you don't have a community, nobody's going to patronize you. <laughs> you're sitting somewhere out there, and then you want to be for the black people, and you're trying to be exclusive, but that's mainly... For black people, right? right? That means that white people are not patronizing you and you can't depend on your black people because they, they you don't have a community. They call that crab in a barrel. That's some people want to call it. Because mm -hmm. you, you're all in the same place, but you guys don't benefit off each other, so you end up taking from each other. Right. Instead of building with each other. And that's what's taking place now because we don't, our businesses are not in the positions or educated to do certain things that take the resources that are given to the grants, you know, all the different situations. You're not able to get the, capital. You're not able to get capital, to really, which is capital. Another key word, dealing with economics. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we're going to touch on economics every week, matter of fact. It's going to be a main thing that we talk about on the Autonomous Party. Because, again, I, as in Poweronomics, Dr. Anderson says, you know, politics, you have to get economics and then you get to the politics. You've got to get economics, then you get to the politics. That's your base. Your base is the economics, then you can force the politics. If you're not having, if you're just a consumer... You don't have no power. You're a debtor at that point. Because some of the things you consume, you might not be able to pay for. Which means you took a loan out to get it. So in the situation we're in, you need to become, we need to become a creditor and be able to credit other people that look like us in our community. Like how it used to be. So when people talk about, oh, you know, America's a great one. I say black people. It was great when we had Black Wall Street, Greenwood, right. Tulsa, and all the different situations that was running where all that money changed hands in that way. We had our own doctor, our own dentist, our own right. everything, gas stations, everything. All in, we, we were all barons right. up in Oklahoma. Right. Black folk, as they call us. Natives. In Indian territory, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we got to understand... We, we, who we are again. And we started from zero. Zero. Because that was, that was from the people. A lot of those people were black indigenous people that migrated during that time of the Trail of Tears. Right. And we were pushed out again because they started, you know, they started. Circumventing. Where they started, they started, <laughs> they started actually building up certain part of, of America, the United States. Right. And that they started taking over more territory. So right. even though they had, they reneged on what they said. Oh, you can have this. And they said, hey, you know what? We branching out. We getting oh, big. Shoot. They broke every tree. Y'all need to push out to the Midwest and. We're going to push y'all right. out. And so, we went over there. West we started the with zero and built it up. They come back and they got, they see, we got paved roads. And they're saying, these niggas got paved roads. How they do that? Uppity How they do that? Kind of when they came back from the war, they were so mad. Right. They was like, what's going on? When they I came back from that war, on. they were so mad. Right. That they seen them And folk. we did this in the and, height and of and the depression. And that was not just, and that wasn't just there. That was happening in other spots. That's sure. just the keynote spot they Rosewood talk about. You know what I'm saying? You know, Rosewood was in Tampa. We call Tampa today, Florida area. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So. We get, we get it popping. You know, I'm going to be real with you. you know, I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Jackson is one of my um, most hated Andrew presidents Jackson. of uh, America. Hands down. I'm going to let you know that. I'm going to say it probably talk shit about him every show. Get in trouble a little yeah. bit. I don't care. It is yeah. what it is because I don't, I don't like him. I don't like him either. And he did some dirty. And I'm going to get into that on the next show. Because we're going to get into the, all the things of politics and economics and things that is attached to who we call ourselves today as black Americans in the black community and black nationalism. But I want to leave you with this because we Baron Soundy brothers. We always going to leave you because we came to wake the civilly dead. And we're the ones considered the civilly dead. Because black is nothing but a status politically given to us that was meaning that we were civilly dead. We're not considered equal with them, with this word that's being used. 
Black means pale. Blanco. So we're going to get to the understanding that colorism that we've taken on is political statuses. And that in the black community, we've been denationalized and then considered uncivilized. So we assimilated into a situation economically to get the things that we needed because we were not in our credit. We was in the debt. And we was forced into debt at that time, not the other way around. Now we're putting ourselves in debt without our own consciousness. We're just doing things. The thing of it is, is that you got really four houses, right? But let's just deal with the fact that you're a consumer. So what, if you remember we're talking about black business, what you want to do is you want to move to being a business owner, entrepreneur, investor. Right. That's how you move out. First of all, got to get out. Got to get out. Like the no movie. Taxes. You see Donald Trump pays $750 in taxes, right? Right. You don't pay any taxes. You like none. You know why? He's working the system a certain way, though. That's what I'm trying to say, but you, once you become an entrepreneur... You know it right off. That, that, right off. Everything. It's, it's a tax code. Everything's right off. The tax right are written in your favor right. when you're an entrepreneur or you're an investor. When you're a W-2 in person, they take your tax out before. They're I pay my you. tax at the end of the year, and I decide if I want to do this, this, and I can get creative, whatever the case may be. You, on the other hand, you go on a W-2, somebody else, they're, they, they're taking your tax out before you even get paid. All your money is getting... they they seeing your money, mm -hmm. taking it out before you get paid, and that means you get less of it. And then you're not investing your money, you're not an entrepreneur, so your money's not working for you. You're not bringing any passive income. You're not sitting at home, going to sleep, and you say, man, I just made $4,000. That's mm -hmm. not happening for you. You got to go somewhere, and you're going to exchange your time for you to be able to get paid. Time is money, money is time. Right. And then in certain, in, in certain aspects, you're losing because you don't get the chance to take care of, you, you, you're paying more taxes, you don't, you're not a part of that tax code, and you have no assets. Most people who are working W-2, they haven't saved up. We talked about emergency fund. Once you get the emergency fund established, then you can start to invest the rest of your money. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, B, you're right. So you don't have that, so you can't be an entrepreneur. Start side hustles. Hi, all, all of them. Side hustles. What side hustles do is that they motivate you and they, they give you this inspiration right. to go out on your own. And then maybe you can take that job to fund your dream to, to start doing something so you can become an entrepreneur. You know, what a way. Less taxes. I'm going to tell you the truth. And because you're, you're not speaking from a belief, I've seen you do that. Right. Like, I literally see the man I'm talking to tonight, the serial entrepreneur, Brian Anderson, go from working a job, three children, and flip that out of that and become strictly by yourself, doing your own thing. Right. And you're able to support your family, do all your things based off of coming out of that same transition you just spoke of. I'm, I'm a witness to that. Autonomy. That's autonomous. Right. And that's why we're having these conversations, because we, we, can, we can become autonomous in this situation. But we have to make the right decisions. You know, I, I call that the Lord. That's the, my, my call to the Lord is an acronym for living out righteous decisions. That's, that's my acronym for Lord. You know what I mean? I'm going to follow the Lord. That's mm. living out the righteous decisions. It's an action behind the will and the plan mm. and what decisions you make and the karma that comes back from it. Sure. So, you know, you've got to follow that law of the Lord, of living out the plans that you say you're going to do. Get follow over, through. Get over that fear. Yeah, no right. false... False evidence appearing real got to go. Right. Yeah. False right. evidence yeah. appearing real got to go. They, I understand we all scared. We all can fall. We all fail. We all right. make mistakes. Right. We, we lose, too. You're going to lose in the game. You put money out before you make money back. Right. That's an understanding, too. You're going to take losses. Understand that fear is false evidence of things that you don't understand yet, that when you understand it, now you can tackle it a certain way. False evidence appearing real are illusions. Right. But it's understanding of being scared to... Make a bad decision because you're going to make some bad decisions. And understand with credit, you're going to make some bad decisions. What it is, and I fault on you for that, but you, you could correct them at the same right. time. And you want to improve your financial literacy. And like in the black community, we're not taught about money. Right. You don't know about money. Right. You go to school, they'll teach you all kind of stuff. Zombie. And you come out and you got a piece of paper and you're an educated fool because you're going to go work for somebody. Real they talk. didn't teach you how to become an entrepreneur. They didn't teach you how the money works. Facts. You understand what I'm saying? And if you don't know how money works, you're never going to be wealthy. You're going to always work for somebody else. You're going to always be backwards because, you, like I was saying with the interest rates, you'll get snagged there. You'll never get to the point that you come from consumer to actually being a business person. That's real talk. You have a, you're a business owner. You own a business. You own assets. You, you, you don't own any assets right now. If you don't have any assets, you can't build wealth. You're right. not wealth builder. I'm, we, we're going we're gonna to leave that wealth builder. Right, okay. We're going to bring it into the next week for this podcast and this show, this mixed show tonight. On that note. I'm going to leave you with a couple things. The harsh reality is live life autonomous. And that is the campaign that we are on. You know what I mean? We are the Baron Soundy Brothers. We came to bring you enlightenment. 
or all the aspects that help you get there, help ourselves get there, we only help you get there, then that's what we need to do. Indeed. Clear vision. At the end of the day, we appreciate y'all for tapping in. Tell a friend, bring a friend. Check all our different links. We're going to be sharing them. Thriller Campaign on Facebook, Instagram, the Autonomous Party on Facebook, Instagram. Um, the website launched November 30th. We're dropping the website. Um, we're going to have some merch, and we're going to be dropping a lot of content there as well. And you'll be able to get all the access to all the things we're doing um, in, in our community. You know what I mean? So just to keep it real with y'all, we appreciate y'all. It's nothing but love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace. Nothing but that. Oh, SoundCloud. Thriller Campaign. It's on SoundCloud. Everything we play on our mixes is always on SoundCloud. You can go back and get it, see it. Check the playlist. We always sharing different things, playlists and mixes for your, you know what I mean, pleasure. You know what I mean? So you'll be able to check that out as well. Like again, tap in. After party with Blaze, we'll play a couple of mixes, get you out of here. Thank you all for tuning in.